All right, we're on 2.3, solving radical equations graphically, and that's on pages uh, 90 to 98 in your textbook. Your curriculum outcomes, we are looking at 30.11, where you need to demonstrate understanding of radical and rational functions with restrictions on the domain. Again, we're just looking at the radical functions part of rational functions come later on in the course. Your lesson objectives, you need to be able to solve radical equations algebraically. You need to be able to solve radical equations by using graphing software. You need to be able to state the restrictions on the domain of a radical function. And you need to be able to see if the answers that you receive when solving a radical equation are reasonable, i.e. do they violate the restrictions on the variable. Okay, we are solving radical equations algebraically first. So some things you need to know is that you must follow the rules of balancing equations when you solve these radical equations. And it's also critical that you check your answers at the end to make sure that they are reasonable. So for example, it says solve the following equations, state any restrictions on the domain. So here's our first equation. Well, a restriction on the domain there is a value for x that you cannot have. And basically that just means, is there something that if I plug it into this x value here that I'm gonna get a square root that I can't take the square root of, or a number I can't take the square root of. And that would mean that x has to be greater than or equal to negative seven. So it can be greater than negative seven or equal to negative seven, but it can't be anything less than. If I put something less than negative seven in here, I get a negative eight plus seven, say, and that is negative one. I cannot take the square root of that. So my restrictions are that x has to be greater than or equal to negative seven. Now, when I solve this equation, I have root x plus seven equaling four. I square both sides. And I'm left with x plus seven on the left-hand side. I'm left with 16 on the right. And I solve for x, which means x is equal to nine. Now I need to check my answer. So I plug this nine back into the original equation. So I now have the square root of nine plus seven equaling four. That gives me square root of 16 equals four. That means four equals four. We are good to go. So that answer checked out. Now, is nine part of my restrictions? Well, is nine greater than negative seven? Yes, it is. So nine is an answer that we can keep. Our second equation is four minus x equals root six minus x. So we need to state any restrictions on the domain. So we need to know what x can and cannot be. Well, if I plug in a value of, of six for x, I know that I'll get an answer of zero, and that's okay. But if I plug in a value of seven, I get an answer that's negative one, and that is not okay. Either. So that tells me that x is gonna have to be less than or equal to six. Now, when you're solving these equations, we know that we have to isolate the root sign. So right now, both these equations that we've been dealing with already has that for us. So we can just go ahead and start squaring both sides. Now, the key thing is that we're squaring four minus x, the entire side. And that means that we need to square a binomial. Now, squaring a binomial, we should get three terms. We get 16 minus eight x plus x squared equals six minus x. Now we have a quadratic equation. We need to solve that quadratic equation. The easiest way to do that is to move everything to the left-hand side because x squared is already positive on the left-hand side. If I move this x over, it becomes a positive x, so I get negative 8x plus x. That leaves me with negative 7x. If I move the 6 over, it becomes negative. And that negative 6 now means that we get a positive 10 on this side. This is an equation that we're able to factor, so we should go ahead and do that. If we weren't able to factor, we would use a quadratic equation. We get two answers, x is equal to five and x is equal to two. Both these answers satisfy this restriction that x has to be less than or equal to six. We still need to check them though. So if we check them, we plug them both into the equation, one at a time of course. So in the first case, I am going to check um, x equals five. So that means wherever I see an X, I put in a five. So on the left-hand side, I get negative one. On the right-hand side, I get square root of one. Is negative one equal to square root of one? No, it is not. 
So this answer does not check out, which means we need to discard x equals 5. What about this x equals 2? When we plug that one in, we get 4 minus 2 equals the root of 6 minus 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. 6 minus 2 is 4. And does 2 equal 2? Yes, it does. That means that we only have one answer, and that is x equals 2. So I want to talk quickly about restrictions on the domain. So for a function like this that we just saw last lesson, f of x equals x squared minus 4 to the power of 0 0.5, which is just f of x equals the square root of x squared minus 4, we can see that this graph does not exist between negative 2 and positive 2. So that just means if I try and plug any number in for this x that's in between negative 2 and positive 2, I would get an answer that is a negative underneath the root sign. So if I plugged in this 0 right here, I'll get 0 minus 4, which is the square root of negative 4. You can't find the square root of negative 4. That's why it is part of your restrictions on the domain. So really when we're talking about restrictions on the domain, another way to look at it is just where this graph actually exists. This graph only exists to the right of two and it only exists to the left of negative two. So we can also solve radical equations graphically, which means we just need to be able to graph them. Um, we're gonna look at this equation, four minus x equals root six minus x. Now in order to graph them, you either need a graphing calculator or um, some sort of graphing software that you could find on the internet, like the one that I use, which is GeoGebra. So I've graphed 4 minus x in blue, and it's just a, a straight line. And I've graphed root 6 minus x in red. Now, because this is an equation, we're really just looking for the, the point where these two graphs, 4 minus x and root 6 minus x, where they intersect. And that is clear to see when you graph them, and that is at x equals 2. Now we just solved this equation a couple slides ago, and we found the answer to be x equals 2. We had a second answer. We had x equals 5. Now it's clear to see that at x equals 5, the red graph is up here, and the blue graph is down here. So they're clearly not intersecting. That's another reason why that answer um, was an answer that we discarded. Now there's one other way for us to actually uh, use graphing software to solve this equation or to graph this equation to find the answer. And that is by manipulating this equation first by moving everything to one side. So when I do that, I'd have to subtract four and I'd have to add X to move both these things over to the same side. And in doing so, I'm gonna get an answer of zero equals six minus X, root six minus X plus X, but minus four. So right here. That's just simply by manipulating this equation. So now when we graph this equation right here, now this wouldn't be something you'd be able to sketch off the top of your head, I don't think. Um, but when we're doing that, now we're looking for it and we're looking for where it equals zero. And that just means where the height of it is equal to zero. And as we hopefully remember, that is just where it's on the x-axis. That's the where the height of the graph equals zero. So when we do that, and I put the graph right here, here's our function, and it's clear to see again that our answer is two. So it doesn't matter how you graph this. If you graph both sides of the equation on the same um, graph, or if you manipulate it in such a way that you move everything to one side and make it equal zero, you will still find the same answer. And you can always solve this equation like we did first to find that answer of two. So in summary, we found that you can solve radical equations algebraically, but you just have to remember to isolate the root sign and square both sides. If that happens to be a binomial, you need to remember to uh, use FOIL. You need to make sure you check your answers by substituting them back into your original equation. There are such things as restrictions on the domain. These are values that will not satisfy the equation. What that means is that if you plug the value into your equation, you get basically a negative underneath the root sign, which we cannot evaluate. We can't find the answer for that. 
And there are two different ways to find the solution of a radical equation by graphing. We just went over them. One is to graph both sides of the equation to see where the graphs intersect. And the other way is to manipulate the equation to get it to equal zero. The solution will be where the graph intersects the x-axis because that is where it is a height of zero. So your assignment is on page 96 to 98, and that wraps up uh, radical equations. Good luck.